Hey everyone, welcome back to the Film Fund Podcast. I'm your host, founder, and executive producer at the Film Fund, Thomas Verity. I'm also an award-winning filmmaker, producer, and film festival judge. I started the Film Fund to give artists and filmmakers an easier, alternative way to get their film funded. Instead of working on a screenplay, crowdfunding campaign, or a grant application, you write one sentence pitching your film for a chance to receive up to $10,000 and other prizes to make it. We are thrilled to announce that our winner 2021 narrative and documentary contests are now open. Check us out at thefilmfund.co to enter your one-sentence pitch for a chance to win up to $10,000 to make your film. And we want to remind listeners that contests do happen regularly, so if you are listening at a later date, check the website at thefilmfund.co for the most up-to-date information. Today we have Eli Hess joining us, one of the Film Fund's amazing and unique judges. He is actually not a filmmaker does not come from a film background. The Film Fund is his main film experience, and I love that because he brings such a unique perspective to the Film Fund judging. I didn't want to have all filmmakers when I was assembling the initial judging panel. Uh, Eli is an architect, comes from an architecture and artistic background, and really sees the world in a unique way, um, different than your typical filmmaker or producer would. So I think it's very important to have that perspective when judging pitches and you know evaluating stories for the film fund eli we're so excited to have you today um thanks so much for coming you can give a much better background about yourself <laughs> than i can so if you want to go into that and discuss you know yeah. art architecture how you think they relate to filmmaking thanks for having me background. on tom absolutely um yeah i'm a i'm a designer uh, i live out in seattle um i work for a company that does uh interior office space um and yeah, I, I view the world as just uh, everything that we've built as humans. Um, and just, I, I refer to it as the built environment. And I love looking up at buildings, um, looking at all the details that other people might overlook. Uh, I, I find that when buildings work the best, they we don't notice them. Um, so you really only notice bad space. And hmm. so it's kind of a, a, a not very glorious profession uh because you really only get sued if something doesn't work uh so <laughs> i really enjoy it but um yeah it it i definitely appreciate films but have no film background like tom said how um how do you view that's definitely an interesting perspective on architecture i mean i'm not an architect i never thought about it like that like you don't notice things and that's good um yeah. design i guess but in viewing art as a whole, does that also influence how you see that? Um, well, like going through a museum, I, I really think that art, uh, I, I like when it, it speaks directly to you and you don't have to really go searching for it. Um, I think that's when it's the most powerful. Um, just like when I'm judging these sentences, really, if they deliver something to you that's powerful in just one sentence, it's, it's worth its weight in gold and you really don't have to like sit there and scratch your head and and you know maybe if it's something that you do every day for a living you want to really sit there and scratch your head about it but i think to be accessible art really needs to be um clear and and deliver its message in a concise way yeah i 100 percent agree i mean one of the reasons i'm so passionate about filmmaking and the art of film is that it has such a, and any art, I guess, it has a power to affect the viewer um, in an emotional way. And being able to do that in one sentence concisely really is a powerful thing. And it's difficult too. But um, totally. like you said, I think being able to effectively convey that vision and affect someone just by writing one sentence, um, I think that's really powerful. So um, yeah, I think that's a great view you have. And I think it's an awesome perspective you bring to the judging what do you find unique about the art of film? Um, I definitely think that it's 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 a very unique art in that you um, you sort of it it comes to you. Um, you can sit down and sort of just experience a um, it's 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 you're sort of there's a distance between you and the screen, right? You don't really have to interact with it. Um, and it really, it's, it can also kind of just like envelop you. Like it, it, there's this imaginary component to it where you and your own experiences 
come to the table when you're watching a film um, where it, you know, if you're a good filmmaker, you're producing something that is your own experience, but you're also trying to convey a message that can interact with someone else that you've never met before. And I think that there's a very um, isolated experience that you have as a viewer and when you're experiencing film that you can kind of, you don't need to know anything about the person that made it or what they were thinking, but if it's done right or if it's done well, you kind of know a lot about them at the same time, mm -hmm. yeah, whether you want to or not. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, whenever you're writing a character, there's always going to be part of yourself in that character. Totally. Be in, in, whether it's a conscious or unconscious process, you're injecting uh, your own experiences into that character and into that story. So I think that's super interesting. Um, and it has to do with empathy too. Um, and I guess all art really goes down to empathy and how you're interacting with it. Um, but like you said, film, you don't, you're, it's kind of this external experience at the same time where it's affecting you. Yeah, and I don't think that you can have the ego that you have when you're a different type of artist. You know, I think like public sculpture or architecture can have this um, macho egoism to it that people, but, but film is different. You can't really just be a sort of hard-headed, uh, ego-driven filmmaker because you're not going to have created something that people want to watch. And mm -hmm. unless it's the best s cinematography that has ever been produced, um, you're not going to want to watch something that's been designed or written by somebody who's, it's all about them. They have to have this sort of worldly context and um, write characters that are approachable and understandable. Absolutely. And it's, um, it's collaborative art form too. I mean, I don't, I don't know anything about sculpture uh, other than <laughs> the first thing. This is so like insulting to the sculpture community, I'm sure, but it makes me think of that SpongeBob episode where he has like the big hunk of granite and just like hits it and then it's in chisel like Michelangelo or chisel, yeah, whatever. Um, but it's, I, I feel like it's usually more of an isolated art form, sculpture Definitely. or architecture. Um, whereas with filmmaking, not only do you have to collaborate with your crew and your cast, but you also, like you said, have to bring in a worldview um, and write approachable characters and write stories that can resonate with people. So I think that's super interesting. Um, and I guess that point comes from your, your outsider perspective, not being a filmmaker, you're able to appreciate that more. Okay. Um, so when you're reading a pitch, it maybe it resonates with you more. Um, whereas maybe it would be lost on another judge who lives, breathes film every day. Um, it's like, oh, this is this type type of, you know, character or theme or archetype, but you're, you're viewing it from a wider artistic lens, no pun intended, which I think is, uh, pretty interesting. Um, do you think that that greater art background makes you a better judge? Not better than, you know, the other judges, but just different yeah, and good. Definitely bring something else to the table. Um, and I, I think when I'm going through and, and judging, I'm looking for things that I, I, I don't really have a um, that brain telling me that, oh, that, that might not work. Or, oh, they're going to really struggle with doing that for a certain amount of money. Or I'm just there to, to judge it based off the merit of the idea. And mm -hmm. um, also looking for things that I've never thought or seen before. Um, so if, it, if we were talking the other day, um, some co coworkers and I about innovation and how we define that. And I think to me, it was something that it's like, oh, I wish I thought of that. And that's sort of like what creativity and what innovation should be is someone has a brilliant idea and they just need some help figuring out how to convey it to the, to the world. Mm -hmm. What are if you can remember some of your favorite conscious entries you've seen as a judge. Uh, I told you the, the one that I, I called you afterwards um, about the, the guy that goes uh, into the church. Yes. Uh, looking for, for forgiveness. Yeah. From, the... Uh, the cleric. And um, just when you read it, it's so funny. We've read, we've read so many of these, right, Tom, that mm -hmm. as soon as you read it, you know, that was good. 
Yeah. And you don't you don't have to sit there and like, well, was that a sentence or it didn't really sound right, didn't really flow. I'm not sure what they're gonna do with the money. Mm-hmm. There are certain ones. There's probably there's not that many each round that are just really <laughs> concise. No, and it's it's interesting because. You know, we say a lot on the podcast and talking to other judges, judges, it's so hard to make those final choices. But on the other hand, there it is so easy to yeah. get to those those it, finalists it really sometimes is. because when you see a good sentence, it's it's almost like not a very eloquent way of putting it, but it's like the holy shit feeling. It's like, oh my totally. god, like I can I can picture this story, and we can't talk. I don't have the exact sentence um, of that priest murder yeah. story that sounds because because it hasn't been produced yet and our current rule or i'm thinking about changing this but the current rule is that we don't release the sentences until the films are produced out of respect for the winners but i like that the um the overall project is about a priest and a murder and confession and we'll leave it at that but when you know going through all these sentences certain ones stick out um yeah and it's 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 always a cool feeling um and it's it's easier than you would think to kind of get to those those finalists yeah so what you talked about this a little bit um but what do you look for in a submission and how do you think that might differ from what a filmmaker would look for um i i as a as a viewer i love documentary film um Mm -hmm. so i'm always looking for some obscure idea that someone knows a ton about and i've never read or seen anything about it Mm -hmm. um i think that that always merits a really interesting film um so always always on the lookout for that um and then i would say that if there's some sort of clear description or presentation of a character that you can you can kind of get behind um if there's you know I think about a lot in film, there's not a ton of, um, you know, presentation of people of color or people of different various backgrounds. And if so, mm-hmm. there's a presentation of something like that, that's sort of like this um, interesting new take on something that you maybe have seen before, or it's, it's, um, it's sort of like a spin off of uh, so sometimes I'm just trying to think of these in my head, right? Like of these mm. sentences that we've read before. Um, if it's just a delivery of a story that you want to watch, <laughs> you know, it sounds so stupid, but <laughs> if it's if it's uh, sort of like a um, like, hey, there's this very very short little idea I have, and this is what I need the money for. Um, it doesn't have to be some crazy change the world thing, but if it's just a different perspective, that's fresh and something that I haven't seen that, Mm. um, it's, it's perfect. I mean, yeah. And it does sound, you know, it, you said something super important there and you said it was stupid, but at the same time, it's not stupid. I, I would call it maybe surface level, but it's so much deeper than that. It's, do I want to watch this? Yeah, totally. It's, it's really, it's really as simple as that. That's kind of the first I mean, yeah, we talk a lot about on the on the blog, you know, conflict and what are the stakes of the story and does the use of funding relate to those stakes and the conflict? And that's really what makes a strong sentence. And it does. And that's all valid. But at the end of the day, it's really do I want to watch this? And I think bringing up documentaries is an interesting point when you said you want to learn about something maybe you're not too familiar with or experience stories about people of color. The word that popped into my head was esoteric. And it's it's kind of like viewing something e- even if it's not esoteric or like the secret thing but it's viewing something in a new way or something yes in a way that's not as familiar and i think that's what can make it um interesting and, and that's what i like about your perspective because you as a non-filmmaker are viewing these sentences in an entirely new and different way than the current judges uh, or not the current judges the other judges um who all have a filmmaking background and they all have different backgrounds some are more academic um You know, we have people of color on the judging panel, so we do get a a mix of different perspectives on the sentences, but I love that you said, do I want to watch this? Because your, your, your architecture background is so important and your artistic background is important as a judge, but you also have more of a viewer's mind, I think, as a non-filmmaker. Like I've seen, 
memes online about, you know, there's this account, shout out to, I think it's called movie set memes or something on Instagram, but it's like normal people watching a movie and enjoying it. And then filmmaker analyzing every single detail and they're like right. sitting there like, um, so like that's how we're looking at these sentences. Whereas you're, yes, you have a different artistic approach um, and your experiences are different, but you also have that unique perspective as a viewer, which I think is so important. Um, if you, when we do get to those finalists and when you're, uh, let's say you had to pick one sentence over the other and you have two really good entries, how do you make that decision? That happens a lot. There's usually yeah. a couple extra. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I just read them again and again, probably, you know, read it twice, read the other one twice, go back and forth. Um, and it really just comes down to what is more catchy, you know, mm -hmm. what, because this is such a short entry and you're able to do that, you're able to reread, you know, what, what do I leave? Just like watching a movie, when you get up from the couch, you're like, that was awesome or eh, that wasn't that great. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a sentence. If, if you read it and you're like, wow, not only is this person a really good filmmaker, probably, but they also can really put together a catchy sentence. <laughs> and so what do you, you know, you're looking for something that's, um, so as you're putting your sentence together, read it, you know, know that someone will be reading it. And I'm sure mm -hmm. people are, but I've also seen times where there's a, a really great idea but some weird grammar junction in the middle where it's just like, oh, you know. It takes you out of it almost. Yeah, it, it totally does. It's like if your first scene of your movie had a little, you know, glitch in it or mm -hmm. it didn't really, a character read his line wrong or something. You mm -hmm. know, you want to um, just make sure there's a good flow and that you're leaving like a really good taste in the judge's mouth about what this is going to be. Yeah, it, so. it should be polished and yeah, it is, totally. it's really micro storytelling it's storytelling um yeah. it's one sentence but you're giving us a glimpse into the world of the bigger film <clears throat> so yeah. and even it is even important it, to, have mean, that. to me i put a lot more emphasis on the beginning of the sentence what's the film about which i'm mm. you know you probably do too and even as something funny where it's like we just need to feed our staff or our crew you know not a bad way to say i don't need to know everything about what you're going to do with the with the money um but if you do tell me about it you know that you're halfway through production and you just need to finish her off mm -hmm. that's cool too you know yep. and it really depends on what the beginning of that sentence is because yep. if you have such an amazing premise and your funding use is a little bit more open-ended like we need to pay our crew or i need to hire a cinematographer um and you have a super catchy super conflict um, Layden, I don't know that's the right way of saying that, but super engaging premise in the beginning of the sentence, a more open-ended funding use is fine. I mean, I think it's great when sentences do use something specific. And I always look at Treehouse as an example of that. It's like, um, the use of funding was to build multiple tree houses, which related to the premise of the guy builds a tree house every day and it disappears. Um, so mm -hmm. that really tied the story together, but if you do have, it, I mean, it could be something, something like production design could be an amazing use of funds too. Like say you're let to talk about that priest story. I don't, I don't have the exact entry in front of me and we can't release it yet anyway, but let's just say hypothetically, the use of funds was for production design. That's super vague, but at the same time, production design is what props am I using? What set dressings am I using it? It creates the world of that film. Um, so you have that priest, you have that murder, production design. Well, that's super important. I'm picturing like robes and um, maybe a confessional stall. And mm -hmm. like th this guy knows he needs to create the world of the film. And it almost, it, even though it's kind of vague, it, it strengthens the, the premise a little bit because it gives, gives us a glimpse into what it looks like. But yeah. then you have other sentences that have won like Americano that had such a strong premise part um, about a Syrian refugee hacker who was used as a political pawn um, and they needed funding for post. And the, the premise was so strong that the open-ended um, use of funds for finishing post-production was like, well, this is an amazing story that needs to be told and they need to finish it. So I totally agree with you there. Um, 
<laughs> I have so our our digital producer Tom puts together these kind of outlines for the podcast, and this bullet here is if you have any funny or interesting stories together, this is the last chance to talk about them. Well, Eli and I were in the same fraternity in college, which is how I know him. So I don't really think any of them would be related to the film <laughs> fund. So I, but I thought I thought that was funny, but we'll we'll skip over that one for now. Um, <laughs> what advice would you give to filmmakers or even artists, given your broad perspective you have? Um. I it I don't feel like I'm old enough or wise enough to give this advice, but what I've been thinking a lot about lately is um, don't be afraid to get a new experience in your repertoire. Um, I started out making sculpture with um, my dad, actually. Uh, we were building, you know, 100 foot long, 50 foot tall, big public sculptures. And so I learned to weld and, um, and now I'm at working at an architecture firm. And neither of those experiences are bad they're both just adding to my the diver the diversity of my experience as a professional and i think that you know if you're a filmmaker don't be afraid to make or spend time thinking about an idea that you're not um, crazy about just because you'll learn that it was there there was good parts of it and maybe it didn't come together um that you need to make mistakes. Ugh, I hate hearing that, but like it's true. You know, you <laughs> need true. to you need to spend time doing things that you don't necessarily wake up every day and want to do. Um, mm. Just to have that experience of knowing that when you find the thing you you want to do or you want to yeah, that you like, you'll just like it so much more. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, mm, using that phrase, making mistakes or doing something you're not super into at the time. Um, it made me think of that previous bullet, funny or interesting stories together and our time in college. I don't know if you remember, but the first short film I ever made, I was stupid and brave enough to show it to some guys in the Pike house. And I don't know if you were there or not, but um, it was terrible. Like the first yeah, short I'm film sure I was. ever did. Yeah, it, it, I could probably list off some names. It would be meaningless to people listening, but um, <laughs> It was like, it was enough people there where it was like a real audience and it was so bad, but I didn't know how bad it was at the time. Um, my buddy and the I- The film bad or the situation was bad? The, the, the film bad, also the situation. Like, why am I showing <laughs> this film to a bunch of frat bros? Like, I probably, I don't know. Um, but as, as bad as the film was, um, I learned so much on that set. Like, it was literally me- and a couple of buddies I knew from high school who were either interested in film or theater. Um, and everything sucked. Like, the acting sucked. The, direct, the directing was terrible. Um, cinematography was terrible. It was literally me with a DSLR. My dad holding a boom po pole for the sound for every scene. Um, and we just filmed it in, like, a weekend. And the only thing that was good, I think the writing was decent, but everything else fell apart. But I I'm bringing all this up to say that without that first experience I, I created for myself, even though the end product really wasn't that great, um, the process of putting myself out there and going for it and learning was super important. And um, like, even if I'm directing something on set, whether it was for the corporate job I had or Son of Blackberry, the passion project I did, like I'll, I'll actually think of moments on the set of that film be like, oh, don't, don't do that <laughs> kind yeah. of, or, or, Oh, this actually was, you know, a good way of, of getting this directing, you know, this this emotion across to this actor. Um, so that is something. And putting your work out there, too, because even though it was a closed audience, it was just some buddies in college, um, It it's still an important step to display what you're working on. Um, yeah. Like, I'm sure even in the world of sculpture, people create things that you know, earlier in their career, maybe they didn't think it came out the way they thought it would. Um, but I'm sure it's still important to show people and kind of discuss it. Um, Definitely. So yeah, I think it's good to just make things. Um, yeah. And the welding is worried about too. how they're going to be received. Yeah, exactly. And especially like venturing into other skill sets, like I'm sure you don't weld on the, the job in your, your architecture day to day, but I'm sure that learning that experience taught you some kind of skill about how to approach something or how to do something so 
I think having an eclectic background like that is super important too. Yeah. What um what do you have in store for the future? You said you're living in Seattle, an architect. Yep. Any interesting plans or projects coming up? Getting married this year. Oh my god, I'm gonna act like I'm surprised, even though I already know. But that's <laughs> awesome. C congratulations. Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I work on interiors right now, and I never really thought that's what I would be doing. Um, mm -hmm. What does that mean? Like vaulted ceilings and no, just uh, furniture, in, like, off, office space. So okay. uh, so anything inside the walls of a building that when a new client moves into the space, they redo it. Okay. Um, so I do a lot of Amazon office spaces and they're oh, very, cool. uh, they're very particular about everything in their offices. So, mm -hmm. um, but you know, you get to, it's, it's paint and carpet glorified. <laughs> it's Sometimes what? you get to just, Paint and carpet ah. <laughs> um, and furniture. And mm -hmm. sometimes you get more say in it. Sometimes you don't have much say in it. Mm -hmm. Here, pick from these finishes. Um, I see. But I really, I want to do uh, ground up work. Um, I want to do sustainable buildings. That's the future. Um, mm -hmm. You know, buildings use so much of the energy that we use as humans, and they need to be more efficient if we're going to stick around. Um, I don't think we're going to be terraforming Mars in my lifetime, so we need to make our uh, our life here on Earth more pleasant. Um, I just when you same thing. Okay, here's a here's an analogy. When you read a good film fun sentence, you know. When you step into a good building, you know. There's a building oh, here I in like Seattle. That. There's a building here in Seattle that um, hate to say it was designed by Jeff Bezos, and um, it's called the Spheres. And I went into it for the first time last week and it blew me away it's basically like a giant spherical greenhouse that's mm -hmm. four levels and you can just walk up and around this place and it's like a meeting center for amazon employees mm -hmm. um but it totally inspired me that that is what our future buildings will look like you know mm -hmm. it's not jetsons anymore it's current and mm -hmm. to be on the forefront of designing um green sustainable buildings that have a long lifetime that aren't just going to decay and fall apart like our you know strip malls will mm -hmm. um that is what i have in store and we'll That's see awesome. if i can get there <laughs> and I, I love that um analogy you made walking into a building reading a phone fun sentence you know um it makes me so you said bezos designed the building to my knowledge he doesn't have an architecture background does he he doesn't but he actually, so our firm was the first firm to sort of team up with him and help oh. him design his offices. And he is so in, intelligent and, and quick with, with his um, innovation that he, the classic story is that um, his buildings all need operable windows. So a lot of office buildings, the windows don't open because mm -hmm. it's a whole thing with HVAC and, you know, the, the suction and all these different things um angry board but his meetings where people want to jump out and... exactly and so his buildings do um but it's not efficient for the building to have its windows open at, at certain times of day like peak sun mm -hmm. loading hours mm -hmm. so there's a light on the interior of the building that either is green or red and if it's red you shouldn't open the windows and if it's hmm. green you should and he was walking around with um, one of our managing directors and he said, why do you need a green light or red light? Just need a green light, save 50% of the energy. Mm -hmm. And it's a good point, you know, yeah. things like just that. One, Nobody, so he, he just has this, this, um, this conniving questioning of what exists today and how can mm -hmm. it be better? And I think all architects have that. Um, mm -hmm there's some really prolific architects right now that are just totally transforming the built environment um, mm. and how we are thinking of buildings as not just boxes that we pump heat and cold air into and we can see out of them sometimes. Um, it's more like, how can they be integrated into our lives as we want to live our lives? Mm -hmm. um, so he's doing that with his company you know how can i integrate my company into yeah. the way that you would easy it 
most easiest <laughs> live your life. <laughs> and that's oh. such a good uh, soundbite too about integrating into your own life. I mean, that's totally that goes back to what we were talking about in terms of approachable stories and relating, you know, diff your worldview to another person yeah. and making it accessible. Um, also, the fact that Bezos, a non-architect, is helping design a building that goes back to eclectic backgrounds and is really seeing the world as this creative blank canvas where you can experiment and like i'm sure you know i mean i don't know what bezos does day to day i know he just stepped down as ceo but i'm sure designing a building usually is not on his to-do list so it's out, um, outside the scope of his his work but at the same time i'm sure that helped him in some other aspect of his life um yeah. that different type of thing I, I bet he could produce a film if he wanted to i mean amazon does amazon studios yeah. so i guess i guess he does that anyway um, he's got his hands in a lot of projects yeah. <laughs> i know <laughs> yep um well eli that's awesome so excited for the future i love the perspective you take i want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak today on the film fund podcast we just opened our newest winter 2021 contest period yesterday for narrative and documentary contests they are now open, so check out the filmfund.co, that's C-O, to submit your entries. Remind, oh wow, I'm reading the script, it's telling me to remind them to blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm reminding you listeners to check out our social channels um, where you can see all of our amazing prizes and sponsors. Last contest, we had Meister Filmworks sponsor a complete color grading package. We had Expressway Cinema Rentals sponsor a two-day rental kit with an Ursa Mini G2 and an awesome set of lenses for that. We don't have the exact details on all of the prizes yet, but we will know in the coming weeks as they unfold and I make some phone calls, but we will have kids with gift cards and we will have Adobe Creative Cloud subscriptions to help you make your films. So some awesome prizes. That's and that's in one. addition to the up to 10K you can get um, straight cash money. So remember that the blog is also filled with great filmmaking and producing tips. So check that out as well at the filmfund.co slash blog, sign up for our newsletter and follow us on social media to stay up to date on what's happening at the film fund. I want to thank everyone again for listening and Eli, I want to thank you again for speaking. Do you have anything else you want to add as we wrap up? Oh, thanks for having me on Tom. It's awesome. Absolutely. Love what you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm so glad to have you as a judge, contest after contest. Remember, everyone, tune in every Friday for new episodes. And I think that is a wrap. Talk to you soon.